Advanced Financial Accounting PowerPoint Presentation. In this presentation, we will discuss functional currency. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. Functional currency. When financial statements are restated from a foreign currency into US dollars, we must consider which exchange rate should be used to translate the foreign currency amounts to the domestic currency. So when we translate the foreign currency to the domestic currency, we'll have to determine what our exchange rate are we going to be using in order to do so. How will we account for translation gains and losses? So if there's going to be a translation gain or loss, what are we going to do with that? In other words, should we put the translation gains and losses uh, as part of the income statement, reporting it on the income statement, the gains and losses that are due to the translation process? Uh, exchange rates that may be used. So what kind of exchange rates might we use during this exchange process? Well, we could use the current rates, probably the first thing that comes to mind. You say, hey, we got the financial statements there as of the year ended uh, of this time period. Why don't we just use the current rate? And that's typically what we will do for the balance sheet amounts. And that typically makes sense for the balance sheet amounts because remember the financial statements, of course, on the balance sheet represents where we are at a particular point in time. So simply converting them makes some sense on the balance sheet but you also might think well what about those things you know that we purchased like fixed assets at a, at a point in time maybe we should use the point in time that we ha had the purchase took place so you could argue on that on the balance sheet but the current rate on the balance sheet makes the most sense but if you're looking at the income statement the current rate might not make as much sense because we're measuring a time frame that from a year well let's say for a year's time frame from the beginning to the end so maybe it doesn't seem quite right to use simply the current rate, which would be the rate as of the end of the financial statements, if we're talking like December 31st, rather than using some type of rate that would be um, representative of the period that would covered being January through December. We could use the historical rate. That's going to be the rate that exists at the time the initial transaction took place. And again, this one is, is often would make sense to us if we're talking about a situation like if we bought uh, equipment or something like that, fixed assets, property, plants, and equipment, large purchases that are on the books. We might say, well, maybe we should be putting that, those on the books at uh, the rate that we should be using at the time basically the transaction took place. So maybe we would argue for the historical rate there. And then we have the average rate for the period, generally a simple average for a period of time usually the exchange rate used to measure revenues and expenses. So the average rate, of course, then that would be the one we would be thinking, what about uh, the income statement that has a beginning and an end? We can't really choose one rate at any point in time to reflect the time frame, the period from beginning to end that we're talking about. So maybe it would make sense to use some kind of average. So we'll just use some kind of average and we're going to say, hey, look, this is the rate that best represents, as best that we can, one rate that best re represents the entire time frame of the year. So that would be an argument there. And then we would say, well, maybe if there's a large transaction, you might say, on the income statement, a very large material, very material transaction, you might say, well, on that material transaction, maybe we should use the historical uh, rate for that very large transaction but in general you would think that uh, we would be using possibly an average rate of some kind for the income statement which would make the most sense so you can see we're it's getting a little bit complicated to think about the different rates and if you're going to be using different rates of course uh, you could end up resulting in having gains and losses because you're going to have different translations for you know if you use if you have different rates that are going to be used so functional currency the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. So the functional currency, once again, the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. Normally, that is the currency of the environment in which an entity primarily generates and expends cash. So the functional currency can be used to distinguish between foreign operations that are self-contained and integrated into the local environment because if they're self-contained and integrated into the local environment, you would assume they would be using the local currency at that point. And those that are extensions of the parent and uh, integrated with the parent. In, in other words, uh, on the other hand, if they're using basically the functional currency looks to be the dollar, even though they're in another country and the, and the U.S. dollar is the parent company's primary currency, you would think that although they're foreign operations, they're extensions of the parent and integrated with the parent. 
So we're going to go through a chart now where we have indicators and then factors indicating foreign currency is the functional currency. Factors indicating U.S. dollar is the functional currency. So we're imagining a large company that has a segment in another in another country, say another like a subsidiary in another company. And we're trying to determine what is the functional currency is the functional currency, the currency of the location that they are in. So if they're in, in London or something is the is the currency the pound over there if they're mexico is the currency the peso or is the functional currency the us dollar even though they are in uh, a foreign location so here are some factors the indicator we might look at cash flow so factors indicating foreign currency is the functional currency primarily in foreign currency and do not affect parent cash flows so if the cash flow is primarily in foreign currency and it doesn't affect the parent cash flows then we would think that the functional currency would be the foreign currency typically factors indicating us dollar is the functional currency is if they directly impact the parents current cash flows and are readily available to the parent in that case you would think if that was the case for the cash flows you would think more likely the functional currency or that would go towards the functional currency being the uh, us dollar or the parents currency and then the sales prices primarily determined by local competition or local government regulations not responsive to changes in exchange rates so if you're talking about sales prices and you see that the sales prices are basically dependent as you would expect if it was a company or doing operations primarily and independently in a foreign country they would be subject to the competition of the foreign country and then if it was um, factors that indicate the u.s is the functional currency responsive to short changes in exchange uh, rebates and worldwide competition worldwide competition as opposed to the local competition sales markets active local sales markets for companies uh, companies products may be significant amounts of exports so if the if basically the the local uh, markets are are a large part of the sales markets you would think that would be a good indication that the functional currency would be the currency used because that would be the currency that would be used of course in that location on the other hand sales markets mostly in parents countries uh, country or sales contracts are denominated in the parents uh, the parent currency that would go towards the indication that the functional currency would be the US dollar note that this should be rates up top this word should be not rebates but rates okay expenses labor material and other costs are primarily local costs so if we have the labor the material local cost that would be an indication that the functional currency being the local currency as opposed to the production components are mostly obtained from the parent company's country that would be more of an indication that the functional currency is the u.s dollar financing primarily obtained from and denominated in local currency units the uh, entity's operations generate funds sufficient to service the financing requirements so if they're basically you know self-sufficient and that they're having funds to uh, pay for their financing requirements and the they're obtained in the local currency those would be indications of the functional currency and if the primary if the primarily from the parent uh, or other dollar denominated financing that would be an indication that the functional currency would be the parent's currency in this case in our example the u.s dollar uh, intercompany transactions and arrangements not minty in intercompany transactions with the parent that would mean that they would be more independent you would think right an uh, independent subsidiary if there was less interactive action with the parent which would be another indication that the functional currency would be more likely to be the local currency as opposed to if there are minty interactions uh, intercompany transactions with the parent you would think then that they would be integrated more with the parent operations and therefore the functional currency would be more likely to be the parent's currency in this case in this example the u.s dollar reporting currency of parent should be used as the foreign entity's functional currency if and this is kind of like the exception to the to the rule there is a severe inflation in the local currency inflation over 100 percent over a three-year period so in, in other words if we ran through all those tests and we said hey the functional currency may may be the local currency given the tests that we have here that's the determination we make but then we see that there's a severe inflation in the local currency inflation over 100 percent over a three-year period well that's severe that's severe inflation so then we're, we're still going to typically go to the point where the reporting currency of the parent should be used as the foreign entity's functional currency in that case why 
because the financial statements can be distorted by the volatility of hyperinflammatory uh, currencies if the local currency is used as the foreign entity's functional currency. It could distort the financial statements to the point in a material way and therefore the benefits of, of using the functional currency as the, as the foreign currency do not outweigh the benefits of, of using you know, the parent currency and therefore in that case we should use the parent currency.